Hi, I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks, and today we're making mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes, definitely one of the favorite side dishes of not only holidays, but even just like everyday dinners. Mashed potatoes sound simple, but believe it or not, there's some technique to them, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. How to make a proper mashed potatoes. The French actually call them pom puree. Here's what I use for my mashed potatoes. Two to two and a half pounds of russet or Idaho potatoes, about a half a pound of butter, cup, cup and a half of heavy cream, and salt. First thing I want to talk about are the type of potatoes that I like to use for a good mash. Uh, I'll have russet potatoes. Now chefs might disagree, people might disagree. Uh, russets are a starchy and fluffy potato. I like these best because they not only soak up a lot of butter and cream, but I feel they have the best finished texture, okay? There are other potatoes like a Yukon Gold, which is a waxy potato. A little more water, uh, not as high in starch, and I feel like they kind of get a very heavy feeling, whereas the russet or the Idaho potato gives you a nice, light, fluffy mash. Let's talk about the other ingredients. I have unsalted butter. Stick with unsalted. This way you can control how much salt you put in. Uh, each butter that you buy has a different salt content. So if you use salted butter, you know, you never know what you're going to get. So unsalted butter. I use heavy cream, okay? Butter and cream. Heavy cream. Uh, you can use light cream if you want. But for the most part, you know, you don't eat mashed potatoes every day. So if you're going to eat mashed potatoes, butter and cream, heavy cream is the way to go. For my mashed potato, the first thing I'm going to do is peel the potatoes. Uh, and I am very specific about the way I peel potatoes. Um, and people probably call me crazy. I'm very specific about the way I peel apples. Um, I use a Y-shaped peeler. This is a Recon Coon, uh, and I'm not sponsored by them at all, but this potato peeler, this Y-shaped peeler, I feel is the best. And usually you can get like three of these for like eight bucks, and they last forever. And when they're kind of dull, you can either throw them out or you can try and sharpen them. Great peeler, okay? Uh, I've been using these pretty much my whole career. Y-shaped peeler. I have a bowl for my peel, and I have a pot of water for my potatoes. Now, um, this water is not what I'm going to cook my potatoes in. I've rinsed my potatoes off. I've dried them. So I've gotten all the excess dirt off the outside. But this water is going to uh, be the second rinse after I peel them, right? Because if there's any extra skin and stuff like that. So this water is just here so that my potatoes don't oxidize while I'm peeling, okay? So what I like to do is I take the top. I'll peel the top of the potato, the bottom of the potato. This little doohickey here is actually to take eyes out or blemishes out. Okay, and you can use that to take the eyes and the blemishes out. But once I get the top of the potato off, I just do nice, long, smooth peels, right? And I always see people going like this. Da -da -da. It drives me nuts, right? It's decisive, it's quick, and you can peel a potato in basically seconds, right? So if you have more of these, you can get your eye, your eye hole thing Eye hole thing? Is that a thing? <laughs> you can just take any eyes out. Uh, you can peel away any blemishes and these go in the water, okay? So we just peel top of the potato off, bottom of the potato, and then I just kind of connect, connect the dots. And it should be fairly quick. Now I've been doing this for many years. Yeah, it takes a little while to, to be fast, but honestly, I think this is the best way to peel potatoes. Okay. Try and get any skin off, any blemishes. If you see any, you can get them out. Okay, and then just peel. The potatoes are peeled. Uh, next step is to take the potatoes and actually cut them in half, right? Um, so you can see I have, that's my smallest potato that I had, and I have this one that's kind of double the size. So what I'm gonna do is cut this in half so that they cook at the same rate. I want the potatoes to cook at the same rate. I also leave them a little on the larger side so that when I kind of mash them, they retain a lot of their internal starch, right? So you can cut these really small and they'll cook a lot faster, but then they'll retain a little bit more water and that's not what I want. I want to put butter and cream in these, not water. So let's cut these in half. Okay. Cut them in half so they're basically the same size. Okay, good. And then what I'm gonna do next is take them over to the sink, 
Dump out this water. It has a little starch in it, but it also has some like floaties from the skin. Dump it out, give them a quick rinse, put water on it. Potatoes are peeled, I've covered them with cold water, okay? What's great about this is if you wanna get ahead on your prep, you can do this in the morning and not cook these till the evening. You'll probably even get away with a full day of them being submerged in water, okay? So you can get ahead on prep, which is nice. Uh, next thing I wanna do is add salt. I do salt my water for potatoes, and then I'm gonna turn them on and bring them to a boil, okay? Bring them to a boil and then lower them to a simmer, right? I want them to simmer lightly uh, just so that they don't fall apart. If they boil and it's really rough, they start to break apart. You lose a lot of starch into the water. So bring it to a boil, lower it to a simmer. The potatoes are boiling. Before I lower them to a simmer, I wanna show you something. I got my knife and this is gonna be important later on. I'm gonna test these potatoes to see if they're done this. I know for a fact right now they're raw. And when I stick my knife in now, it really holds on to the potato. And basically what's gonna happen is when they're cooked, it should slip off super easy. The knife should go in and it should slip off. But you can see, because it's raw, it holds onto the knife, okay? So let me put the lid on, lower to a simmer, and let these cook. A couple of minutes before my potatoes are done, I'm gonna heat my butter and cream together, melt the butter fully, get the cream hot. And this is gonna ensure that our potatoes stay nice and hot when we mix the butter and cream in. Not only that, there's not gonna be lumps of butter floating around. It's gonna incorporate a little easier. So heat your butter and cream. Potatoes are done. Okay, take the lid off. You can see that they're starting to split lightly. And basically when I put my knife in there, they kind of slip right off my knife. And that's what I'm looking for. They still have some of the starch intact, uh, but they are not hard. They are soft, okay? I don't want it to go much further than this because after they go past this, they'll start to break up. And I don't want it to break up. I want it to be whole pieces. Let me strain these in a colander and then we'll finish these up. Potatoes are cooked. I've strained them in a colander, got off all the water I could possibly get. A lot of times people at this point will dry them out in the oven or something like that. I'm not too worried about that. Because I left my potatoes in big chunks, I'm gonna have plenty of nice kind of fluffy, starchy potatoes. This is a piece of equipment that I think everyone should have. This is a potato ricer. This is the way my grandmother did it. Um, it's a great piece of equipment to have. It's not that expensive. I'll put a link to one in the description, but this ensures creamy mashed potatoes with no lumps. Now, if you like lumps, that's okay. You just buy one of those old fashioned mashed potato mashers, or I don't have one of those. So I just use a whisk and I just like beat up my potatoes in the pot. Uh, that's if I want lumpy ones, but I want nice, smooth, creamy mashed potatoes. So the potatoes go into the ricer. You just do two or three at a time. And I always do this into the pot, right? So I use this pot to cook the potatoes, but I do this into the pot because I wanna heat them uh, with the cream and the butter. So uh, I'm just gonna leave them in the pot so they're easily heated up later. Squeeze. Uh, there's also another piece of equipment called a food mill. And if you have a food mill, good. Uh, it's more of a professional piece of equipment. Uh, but for the most part, if you have a ricer, this works for making your beautiful mashed. Okay, once they're riced, get off the sides, make sure you make a big mess, and we'll fold in the cream. We're gonna add the cream and the butter, right? Uh, so I'm gonna mix this with a spoon. You can use a whisk if you want. I like to use a spoon or rubber spatula. Uh, one thing I wanna caution against is don't put this into a food processor or a blender because then you'll have wallpaper paste, right? Any sort of like real powerful tools like that, even sometimes a mixer, uh, you wanna just do these by hand, nice and gently, okay? First I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a nice pinch of salt because potatoes take a lot of salt. Then I'm gonna add the cream. I'm not gonna add it all to start. My, my kind of vision of these is we're going to add as much cream and butter as they take without them being soupy, okay? So I want them to be super creamy without being soupy, okay? So I add about half the cream and butter there. I'm gonna fold it in. I'm gonna add a little more. I'll probably end up using all of it. Um, yeah, look at that. They soak up tons of the butter and cream and that's what we want, super creamy, super buttery. Uh huh. Good. I think that we're pretty good there. I want them to be nice and creamy and fluffy. Let me give it a taste. Definitely needs a little more salt. And I think I might add the rest of this. Good. And we're going to mix that in. Super creamy. Delicious. Okay. 
So if I would have added all that cream and butter and it was cold, I'd have cold mashed potatoes right now. And that's not what I want. I want it to be nice and hot. Mix it in. You see, it'll absorb most of that cream. Look at that. Beautiful. That's what I want. Super creamy mashed potatoes. Look at that. Let's plate these suckers up. Look at that. Super creamy. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's give them a try. Mm. Creamy, delicious, light, and fluffy. Mashed potatoes the way they were meant to be. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, hit the little bell to get notifications when we have new videos out. We have merch in the description down below. Need salt t-shirts. I control the salt t-shirts. Uh, I want to thank our patrons on Patreon for your support. We really appreciate it. We have a P.O. box down below in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Mashed potatoes. Who doesn't love mashed potatoes? I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.